Hello, this is Dr. Scott McLean, and this is a presentation about implant temporization. During this case, we'll be planning an implant placement using guided surgery with DTX Studio Implant. This is a great software that will allow you to get the implant exactly where you want to go in an excellent position. Now, we're going to also plan to do a temp shell. So these little wings will hold the temporary imposition while we start to bond it to an abutment that is going to be screwed into the implant. But unfortunately, we did not have the torque values that are required to do this. So we want to have at least 35 Newton centimeters. So I'm going to show you what I did instead to kind of get out of the problem because we're in the middle of surgery and the patient wants to have a custom temporary. So our goal is to take the TEM shell and to make it into a Maryland bridge using bonding. After three months of healing, we are going to go in and do a second stage surgery, removing the Maryland bridge and converting it into a TEM shell that will be supported by the implant. The importance of this is that we'll be creating some soft tissue and moving the tissue from the lingual to the facial, creating a beautiful aesthetic profile, which is what the patient really wants. Now we did place the Thai Ultra Nobel Parallel Implant which will provide us with an excellent support for the soft tissues because of the platform shift. Now notice that the tissues here, we're actually going to bulk them and use the temporary bridge to support this area. The TEM shell was created using DTX Implant Studio. Many programs can do this. And normally it's hollow and we filled it in. When it's hollow, we can use it traditionally over an implant abutment and secure it in place. But here we filled it in so we can start to use it as a Maryland bridge because we didn't get that torque. We we'll use a sandblaster to clean the wings so we can get a little bit better bonding, but we don't really have to do a lot because this PMMA bridge really bonds uh, pretty well to this resin. So we use some isopropyl alcohol and clean up the uh, sand off of the wings. So this is important just to make sure that it's uh, really clean for bonding purposes. And then we'll take it and wash it in some water. And the water will just uh, take off any residue of the alcohol. And then we will dry it. And so drying it just gets it ready for the, the next phase. And so then we're all set to go. So we'll put on a rubber dam and get this so that it's nicely isolated. And uh, put a, a couple clamps on so that we can keep it dry. Because it's going to be important to be dry throughout the process. And what you'll notice is that the rubber dam has, you know, not been punched on that central. And so on the, uh, the anterior, we just kind of left that a little wider so that it would, you know, kind of seal that area off. We don't want any kind of uh, stuff getting around there. To bond this into place, we'll use some Scotch Bond Universal Plus as the adhesive. Then we'll also use some 3M Relax Universal Resin Cement. And this will provide a very excellent bond for that three month period. This is kind of a unique bonding situation because on one side it has to be temporary. Then we also have to bond to zirconia which is the other central uh, implant crown and then natural tooth on the lateral. So in order to do this we have to have something that I'm going to be able to take off later. So I'll be able to drill this off and separate it back. But at the same time, I want this to stay in position, support the soft tissues. To start this procedure, we'll take the adhesive and the cement and get it all ready. And uh, we'll use the Scotch Bond Universal Plus and dispense a little bit of this out. And then also have the cement ready by placing the tip on the special syringe. When you place the tip on, it opens the valves of the syringe enabling it to be ready for dispensing. An interesting feature about the Scotch Bond Universal Plus is it can be photo initiated but also it can be initiated by the Relax Universal Cement. Not necessarily other cements but the Relax Universal Cement can do this which is kind of a cool feature. So we'll bring over the Scotch Bond Universal Plus. The dental system will hold that and uh, we're going to kind of bring this to the patient. And I'll take a little applicator and start to just kind of rub the surface 
with the bonding agent. And so there's MDP in this. There's also, you know, different primers, silane. So we're able to bond to both the zirconia crown that's on that I'm on number eight, and also this one on the natural tooth. So we're going to bond this in place, and then we'll cut it off later on, and uh, so that the patient can, you know, have good quality of life during the healing process because. We couldn't put the temporary on, and I don't really want to place a temporary partial here. And we already had the temp shell because we were planning on making a temporary support on the implant, but he didn't quite have the, the torque value. So you want to do a 20 second rubbing with this adhesive. And it's important to do the 20 seconds. This is a self etching process. And we will air dry to reduce the solvents from the adhesive and also to make it a very thin layer for bonding. We use some Relyx Universal Cement to put this bridge into position. And you can see this wonderful little tip, and it's an orange tip with a 45 degree turn. And this makes it really super easy to put it exactly where you want to go. We'll express a little bit out to make it a consistent amount that's mixed, because the tip is a mixing tip. And most mixing tips are way, way bigger than this. So this actually makes you conserve cement, because you're not throwing all the cement out with the tip. And we'll hold it in position. It's important to kind of hold it as you're going to do the curing because this is self curing, but we'd rather light cure in this position because of the delicate nature of this. And so we'll do the light cure and start to have this bonding go. Since this is a provisional healing bridge, we're not going to apply the Scotch Bond Universal Plus to the PMMA bridge. We're going to just put the Relax Resin Cement on and use that to cure this into position. And this will make it easier when we go to take this off after the implant has been healed to remove it. So it makes it a simpler procedure. So we're doing lots of light cure bursts. Once we start that, then this will help it to engage. Now this would self cure if you held this long enough by itself, but it's very wise to use the light cure and to use the deep curing light that we're using here. And this is actually by 3M and enables us to get that cured very quickly. So we can come back in and start to take off the rubber dam. By pulling it out, we can see where the soft tissues are, where the lip is, so that we can kind of cut this because we can't pull it through the contact because it's a Maryland bridge style. So just cut that anterior aspect and get that out of the way. Be careful not to cut the lip uh, get your finger underneath there to protect that patient. And then we're ready to, uh, you know, start to look at where the implant is, take some x-rays, and make the patient happy. Now one of the features I like about this cement system is once you're done the cementing, you take off the tip and you're going to throw that away. So we're not going to wipe that down and put it back in the drawer you actually take it off and then you wipe the you know the syringe and this is self closing with the valves and so then this gets put back in the drawer for the next patient so you're not you know this is a hygiene type of uh, issue but that tip needs to be taken and then thrown away and so this is important not to keep that contaminated item in your operatory so i do like this tip type of system because what the manufacturer says is by using a smaller tip, you use 80% less resin and then also 50% less plastic waste when you're throwing it into the garbage. And this makes sense to me because adhesive and resin are expensive and we want as little plastic thrown away as possible. Of course, it's always prudent to check the occlusion. On a bite like this, it's not too deep. It actually makes a lot of sense. But if you had a deeper bite, you might not want to do this procedure. So you have to, you know, check out what parameters. You have to be able to take out the working, the non-working, and the protrusive interferences on this temporary because we don't want a lot of forces on it. So the patient may have a shorter looking crown, and many are very happy to have that because they'd rather have that than a temporary partial. So we just kind of check it, make sure it's okay, and then we're, you know, getting close to being done. During the second stage surgery, the goal will be to try to salvage that temp shell and then to do a palatal type of incision, bring some of the tissue forward 
and use the TEM shell to kind of shape the soft tissues. And so this will utilize that TEM shell in a very effective way by having this Maryland Bridge style temporization for three months and then also using the same TEM shell to create a temporary uh, implant crown for tissue shaping. So this is Dr. Scott McLean and this has been a video about implant temporization.